don't get out much anymore. It's like a, a agoraphobia. Or yeah, to, what is that called? What is it when you don't leave the house? I know. I feel like COVID has made people very, like, a lot of weird mental things have popped up for people. I had a friend who, at the beginning of the pandemic, I was at my mom's house for two months. Oh, God, it sounds terrible. Because my friend was like, everything is going to be bad. Like, your house might get, like, broken into. Take everything. He was, like, really freaking out. Oh. And then his fear, like, made me get fearful, you know? Right, like, it's right. it's contagious. The fear is contagious. So then I'm like, I need to go to my mom's house. So I took everything with me, went to my mom's house, and then after two months, I'm like, I need to get away from this biatch. Yeah. It's, uh... Yeah, it's tough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the only thing I can say at this point, because we're coming on a year. I know. Do you feel a little bit more hopeful now? No. No. No, not at all. Zero hope. Yeah, I don't. I don't it's not that I have zero hope. I, 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 you asked me, do I feel any more hopeful? And I, my answer to that is no. Yeah. Because it's like, because I don't, it's like, I would be more hopeful if they were like, all right, the vaccine is coming and we're all going to get it by such and such date. And then we'll be back at concerts by this date. But it's like, that's not the news. That's not the information that we're getting. So yeah. Maybe I feel a little more hopeful that the Biden administration will be more transparent. But who knows? All, yeah. All politicians are politics is politics. Right? Yeah. That's what I don't like about. Uh, I don't know. I feel like sometimes people put too much hope into future presidents. Everyone's like, oh, thank God yeah. Biden's here and it's going to save the day. And it's like, no. Mm, I know. Let's give it a yeah. second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I, I'm just happy that we don't have a president who plays into yeah, uh, like Twitter controversies and negativity and just you know any of that. But you I'm, know what? You know what's crazy? Hmm. If there was any president that was going to skip an inauguration, it would have been Barack Obama. Yes. So he was like, you know, the, all that birther stuff. Is he, you know, all his birth certificate. That was all Trump telling yeah. him, you're not really an American, right? And then Obama roasts him at the correspondence dinner. Yeah. And then this sent, that guy turns around and wins the presidency. If you if there was ever a time to be like, ah, I'm going to skip this. But he didn't do that. Yeah. He took it like a man, gracefully transitioned of power to a person that he obviously despised. Yeah. What a pussy Trump is. Yeah. To like, it's really a sign of like who he is as a to 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 just completely not even show up. Oh man. But I don't think that's surprising (laughs) at all. You know, it's like it's what you would if he did show up. I would be baffled. I'd be like, who took over his body? Maybe show up and then like make a scene or something. Do something within character, but to not show up at all. I mean, that's a real sign of, like, the person, his character. And I'm just wondering what all the, like, Trump's, because, like, you know, these podcasts, man, you know, people people are, like, keyboard warriors. Um, I, oh, yeah. I, I find that people that support Trump are the kind of people that are real quiet in a room, you know. And I have no problem. Listen, I'm not an anti, completely anti-Trump person. I get why people voted for Trump. I get people wanted to change. They wanted, you know, and at the time in the beginning, he seemed like it was like, oh, this is so anti-politics or whatever people's reasons were. People are, it's all anecdotal to them, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> if you worry about the, the economy and you, and that's all you care about is money and your future and your, your own selfishness, then yeah, Trump was great for you. Sure. You know what I mean? So, I mean, I, I don't think they're all deplorable or anything like that, but- these are the kind of people that are usually pretty quiet in a room because they just want to be like, okay, people go, you know, who supported Trump? The Trump supporters go, you know. Yeah. <laughs> well, just because they know that there's going to be so much. Right, exactly. <laughs> and that's the problem, too, is. Have you ever not wanted to sit like this? This seems kind of weird. <laughs> it does seem weird, right? Yeah, because like that camera's, I feel like I want, because I, I feel like, should I be facing this way or should I turn to talk to you like this? I'm, I mean, I'm not sure. I typically what? take my shoes off uh-huh. and then. I just get... Should I turn a little bit? I mean, I feel kind of like... Should it be like this? <laughs> this is how I normally... Yeah, I normally get a little bit cozy. Like, I almost feel like you should move this mic here so it's going like this. Anthony, so then that person next can, episode. So, I got it like that. Remember when I was 
Oh yeah, sometimes yeah, we need to get like bags, like weighted bags, because we had it on the corner oh, and then intern- it fully oh, fell. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, you know, it's a work in progress. Oh, you, home oh, you studio. put it on that, you know, and then you just. That's what we also have That's thought about. Did <laughs> that didn't work out either. Oh, you didn't like oh, it. Oh, did I not like it? Oh, because then your <laughs> legs have to go between the thing. But I think if we put it on the side, I almost feel like the chair that he's sitting in is where you should be. Sitting. It, it, it should be like here, you know. Mm. And then we're and then you're filming like this, and then we're looking at each other like this. Just not I think to take right. over your podcast. No, I think you're right. <laughs> we were we were thinking about going to a studio. No, no, no. This is fun. I, this is lovely. I think this is a better environment for doing this. You know, I, I think, think you're it, right though about a second chair. Yeah, I just think it'll be better if we're like because because it just feels kind of like you know I get because I get this camera, so this is great. That's I would consider that to be my camera, right? Well, sometimes it does a little side. No, it does a little. We switch back and forth. That'll be so, like a side profile. I get it. So then, therefore, then that's why I feel like, well, should I be doing this? You know. But then it's like, then I'm, but I'm talking to you, yeah. so it just feels. Anyway, I don't know. I haven't been out in a while, so <laughs> <laughs> I have the same problem because I do. I film like this, so I always do like this. But we're a little, and we're a little further apart. Mm. And I have a swivel chairs, so it's easier to like, you know. Yeah, yeah. This one, it's funny because different guests like. Some people sit super far away from me, like as tight into that corner as they can. And then I'm like, oh, my God, am I like a perv? Like, do they think that I'm like, but it's just a weird, it is a weird people are People are so weird right now, too, about, and I'm always leery of this. Like, if you're super COVID scary. Yeah. I'm scared of you, you know, like. Yeah. Just because I went to a restaurant last night, by the way, to order some food. And these people were going overboard, man. They were like. What restaurant? It's in a neighborhood I live in. It's just like Mexican restaurant. Oh. It's it's closed down. They're not closed down, but you know, takeout only. So they're like, oh, please stand over there. Please go over there. You know, like everything was like, you know, had, where's the menu? We need to wipe it down. It was like so strict, and I was like, okay, but they didn't get the food right. Yeah, because they're too worried about. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, I said no cheese on the uh, to- tostada. You got cheese on it. Yeah. So you're not paying attention. You worried about clean menus? You know. So I don't know. Anyways, yeah. <laughs> getting back to what we were talking about, I just feel like it's uh, it's it's weird times right now. Um, and so may- maybe like if you want to, I don't feel hopeful, not because Biden, but maybe because there's going to be, maybe he's going to, it's going to feel different maybe, you know? I was watching Fox News last night and it's funny, I, uh, Sean Hannity, uh-huh. I love going, bet- I like to watch both because yeah. I got to see what the other side is saying, you know? That's why I, so and he was just going in. He was just like it was the most boring speech, and he was. Just, and I was like, oh, this guy's in his element now. Yeah, like like it's better for him. Fox News is back. Yeah, they're <laughs> it's better for them to have a Democratic president. Yeah, because then they could just be like, this guy sucks. This guy's ruining the country. Yeah, <laughs> it's better to be on the offense than to have to be like on this weird defense. You know. So I thought, oh, I thought, oh, we're back to normal. This is how it uh, um, it should be. I actually feel always feel like. There should be a Democratic president and then a Republican Congress. That's how you keep everything in check. Mm. But anyways. Yeah. I, neither well, here nor there. I was, I was, <laughs> they were talking about how the only other time in history someone, the preceding president didn't show up for the inauguration was Andrew Johnson. Andrew Johnson. Yeah. Exactly. Andrew Johnson, I think. Yeah. It was way back talk then. About, talk about pre-internet. Yeah. 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 <laughs> 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 he wasn't getting canceled or anything. <laughs> yeah. But he didn't show up for Ulysses S. Grant's uh, inauguration. And then I went on a whole Ulysses S. Grant Wikipedia. Yeah, you want to know- find out what did he do? <laughs> yes. I'm like, I know about his great, great grandchildren. I'm like, this yeah. is too much. Yeah. It, I just feel like I- I'm just saying it was just it was petty. It was petty. And it was like, you know, you lo- it, it was like. It, it to me it it really showed that the whole election fraud thing what a lie it was because it was like it was just he tried so hard to keep in power and I totally get it yeah like the pres like the most powerful position in the entire world and you have to just give it up like this and yeah. then you know imagine like one day you can get on Air Force One you have everybody's like Mr President Mr President all this stuff and then the next day you're you have just, to give everything back. yeah every day the next day you're just there's like Trump. security you yeah. have like one of those bins from <laughs> yeah, yeah, staples yeah, yeah. you have to put in all your things yeah in there, and it's probably out. like Austin Powers they're like one Swedish made penis pump in lodger <laughs> yeah. I just rewatched it's not mine <laughs> I just rewatched Austin Powers the other day that that 
that scene right there is just the funniest scene. When he's getting unfrozen and they're returning his belongings All that stuff. back the, to There's him. so many funny scenes in Austin Powers. I love that movie. But I love that penis pump one. That's, yeah. That stuff is funny. One receipt. It's yeah, like, and then they're it's like... Mine. It's And then it's like in your signature <laughs> yeah. on the receipt. One warranty card. Yeah. I <laughs> love that scene. It's so That's good. Trump. That's Trump leaving the White House. Yeah. I love that little meme of like Mel- Melania. He's like waving and she's like... Bitch, let's go. You know what I mean? Yeah. She just <laughs> get the bag, get out. She's like, I'm done with this. Imagine, Imagine being a trophy wife and then having to get a job. Like, oh. like all of a sudden, like she's just a trophy. She's like, okay, you're you got billion, you got a billion dollars, or even whatever. I don't have to work ever again. I just, okay, you can. Ha- I'll have a couple of kids with you, and then I'm out. All right, and then they then they go, oh, you gotta be first lady. She's she like, must have been like, are you kidding me? I was so close. <laughs> I was so cl- I like the idea of her starting an OnlyFans now <laughs> oh, yeah, to get yeah. an income. Yeah, hey, she would kill it on OnlyFans. Any anybody would apparently kills it on. Well, no, that's not true. because not now the market is so saturated that like if I were to start an OnlyFans, it's like there's way too there's way too much competition. Wait, wait, it's always been like that. The, what you're talking about is it's just saturated amongst like the one percent that make a lot of money i mean it's like ugh, so funny you're talking about this okay there was this sitcom on cbs and i forgot the name of it but there was this redhead girl on the show and what is her name anyways she's a jazz singer uh-huh. and that was her whole thing my mom loved her she was 15 and she had this jazz album and she mm. sung like sinatra's and and like those kind of songs and it was great cut to now it's like eight years later I've been following her this whole time. Yeah. On Twitter. So the other day, Twitter pops up and I see her and I go, oh, and I see, oh, she's got an OnlyFans. Huh? And she's like super, like being super sexy. And I was like, damn. Everyone. <laughs> I was, but, but, but what I'm saying is OnlyFans is perfect for a person like that because she already has like a um, following. You know what it's like? You know what OnlyFans is like? Huh? It's like when uh, sitcom actors go into stand up. You know, OnlyFans is like 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 uh like when Dustin Diamond went into stand up, yeah. you know, and look, shout out to him because I believe he has cancer right now. He's like, I think he's like he's going through something right now. So damn. Uh, my 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 Dustin my, Diamond was on uh, Screech Sa- Screech Saved by the Bell. Yeah, he became a stand up comedian. But then wasn't there like controversy because he was like yeah 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 yeah, crazy yeah. he was, he okay. was yeah. That's not even the point. What yeah. I'm saying yeah. is what I'm saying is is like. There's a lot of people like that. They go, they have a, some notoriety and another thing, and they go, "Ooh, I could go into this field because I can yeah. make money." That's what's happening with OnlyFans. OnlyFans is like, so like you're, you might be like some B celebrity actress, uh, or even like, like if Megan Fox went on OnlyFans, that motherfucker would kill it. Oh yeah, oh, <laughs> she yeah. would kill it on OnlyFans. You know what yeah. I mean? So it's like, so, so they're just going like, oh, I so I can monetize my whatever. So I get it. So it's like. If you're so, I get why people like this. This 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 girl I'm talking about. She's like, hey, and then it's like these people are like, oh, I know you from, and then they're like, oh, I get to see you naked. Yeah. Oh, this is great. So, so so what's happening is all the regular chicks who are just like, hey, I'm hot, and then you know what else is messing with the the coffee's kicking in. I could tell. <laughs> I felt myself like, oh, I'm going. Their I'm, coffee bah, 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 bah. is powerful. Let me tell you something else that's not helping regular chicks. Okay. okay? Um, Instagram. Oh um, yeah, Instagram is practically only fans at this point. They're all idiots. Like, yeah. like, like this is just my opinion. Every chick on Instagram dancing, they can't dance. You know, they do this little. You know what yeah. I mean? Hey, hey, you're all idiots because you could be making money. You're giving it away for free. I, I follow. I obviously. So my girl is a model. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, <laughs> so because of following her and a few of her friends. Now all my your explore pages. Just- yeah, it's just it's it's I because I, I always go. To, I say to people, I go. I said to my one friend, I was like, dude, is your Instagram like this where it's just all chicks in bikinis yeah. all the time? He's like, no, mine's cats. I love, <laughs> and I was like, oops, that means I have a problem. Yeah, I love knowing what people's explore pages because it says so much about the person. I know, so if I feel like a a, per- a pervert. I, I freely admit that. You know, I like looking at beautiful women so the problem is though i go i look at it and i go who's this for yeah you know like do they know that like weird creeps are are looking at them all the time like it's just i'm talking about 
countless. Yeah. Like I could go like this. I've done it before. I just show people. I go, hey, hey, watch this. Boom. And it's just nonstop for 10 minutes. Beautiful young women dancing in bikinis, doing something like really overtly sexual. Yeah. And you just go this and it's for free. And so you wonder why, like, like, why would I pay? I would never get an OnlyFans. Yeah, I mean, I think free the nipple ruined monetization of uh, sexuality. Because yeah. everyone's like, you got to be strong, be empowered. And then everyone's like, okay, we'll post some, like, sexy pics on Instagram. And now it's like, oh, but now people are making money from this. Yeah. But I think maybe sometimes the goal on Instagram with hot pictures, whatever, is that if they build a following from hot pictures, then they can make money through ads and through sponsored content. Let me tell you something. There's no difference. Yeah. I was talking to this actress friend of mine, and I, and I said to her, I was like, why are you an only? Uh, you ever think about going OnlyFans? You know, she was like, oh, no, you don't get any, you don't get respected. I was like, I... This I said it nicer than I'm going to say it right now. Uh-huh. But I'm like, have you seen your Instagram? Do, do you think that you're any different than the OnlyFans chicks? But yeah, I think that that's the thing is there's shame by there's shame there's from making shame. money off sexuality. If you post it without any money being received on Instagram, it's like I'm doing this for me. Yeah. And it's like, well, no, we're not. We're doing this because we want other people to see it. It's not purely for us. It's a, uh, you know what? I got to tell you, I'm old, I mean, I'm like way older than you. So I come from a different era and I did have a problem with prostitution. You know, I have, I, because, and I've talked about this even on my podcast, but it's like, I, I come from an era of like hookers on the street. Um, and they had the, the, the HBO series. You remember that HBO series? It was you guys won't even remember. I'm probably I'm older than both of y'all. Um, what is it? It was called Hookers on the Point or Hookers. <laughs> but it was like a it was a bunch of HBO documentaries uh, about okay. hookers. And okay. they were all these street walking. Like there was no this was pre internet. Yeah. Like to be a hooker back in the day, you know, you had you to had put, really hustle. You had to like you had work. To put the work in. These bitches now lazy. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> They're on the couch. <laughs> I just don't get it. Old school hookers got good calves. <laughs> yeah, they had to walk. They had These to like. These ones got kinkles. Yeah, they had to deal with stuff. They had a pimp, or they had like you know, or it was some kind of seedy madam, or yeah. it was some kind of thing like that. And so you know, sex work was frowned upon. You know, I think that that we have a stigma on sex work. Okay, and it's like I'm a victim of that too, of my own my own foolish thoughts about it. I guess or whatever. But I will say I've I've compared sex work. I compare it to a casino. Mm-hmm. When you put a casino, casinos are fun. Yeah, they're a lot of fun. I love them. But there's some there's some negativity that comes around casinos too. There's crime in the area. Yeah. There's like people have gambling problems. People have. I mean, you know, there's a lot of negativity that comes to that too. And it's the same thing with sex work. I'm not going to go ahead and pr- praise sex work. I'm not going to be like, you know, because here's I always say people that are in sex work. If your daughter, niece, aunt, mother, grandma, any or any younger woman in your life came to you and said, "Hey, I want to be a sex worker." Are you going to be like, oh, well, let me show you how to do it. No, you're going to be like, you're not going to, you're not, you're going to, it's going to make you feel a certain way. Okay. So then therefore, but don't you think there's something that, that you don't yourself feel like it's the most viable job option. <laughs> yeah. But I think that that's because of what you're talking about, because there's still the stigma and shame. I mean, I get it. It's hard. I want to be like super woke and be like everyone pro woman i just say i totally get it i, I love, know that's why i'm glad we're having this conversation yeah listen I I, I I i i have you ever seen the documentary hot girls want it i don't think i watched it man you got it is the saddest thing so oh i did watch it so it's like the girl it's about these girls who get tr- sort of tricked or seduced into going into to Florida to do porn. Porn, yes. You know what I mean? And they're living at this dude's house. Right. And you just the, the how they talk and what they're going through, you realize to yourself, oh man, this like like what I'm saying is here's the here's the irony of it. A savvy where a chick with that knows what she's doing yeah. and and then has worldly experience. Yeah. That's the person I feel like, oh you're gonna get into porn? Good. You're gonna be fine. Cause you're it's gonna like- know how to that's not the kind of chicks to get into porn because those chicks don't want to do porn. Yeah. Well, it's like <laughs> Sasha Gray is an example. She's a porn star who was like, I'm doing this for this amount of time. Yeah. I have these goals in mind, which yeah, is, the, I think, how you should go into any sort of job you're getting. Your yeah, the stripper like, that pays uh, to, to go to medical school, yeah. right? That's. Uh, but not even that. It's like, I think, I, I could be wrong, but I think Sasha Gray 
it wasn't like to get into medical school. She was like, I want to do porn. I want to do it for this amount of time. And then I want to get out. Hey, listen, I get that. Yeah. I'm not, again, it's like, okay. But once again, it's like, I, we should not make people, like if you went into porn, let's say you did porn before. Okay. All right. Let's pretend. Let's pretend Ali did porn. And then you meet somebody. Uh Uh-huh. Okay. And you're trying to date. Then are you going to tell that person right away? Hey, you know, I used to do porn. Just should it matter? Is it a problem that it might matter to this person? Maybe you meet some guy and he's from some like really like, you know, Christian family and, and you, you're going to meet his parents. And then maybe maybe at that point in the relationship, he goes, I can't move forward because this bugs me too much or I can't, you know, that that is the kind of things you have to deal with. And I don't like the idea that like we have to be OK with your choices just because you made a choice. I don't like that. I don't like people going like. You know, it's okay for other people to be like, hey, that's not part of my lifestyle and I don't really like that. So I'm going to stay away from that, you know? Yeah. I mean, I could think the same way about someone who's in like finance. I could be like, I don't respect that job. You could say it's the same, but we know that it's not the same. (laughs) (laughs) You don't even believe that analogy. I know. I'm like, I wish I knew someone in finance, man. Or but whatever it might be. Or it could be somebody that was like, you know, maybe it was somebody that was like in the military and he was a sniper and you're being like, and you're a person that's like, I don't, oh, did you, if you you killed people in the military, I don't want to, you know, that could be your stance about whatever whatever I'm saying. It's not just, I'm just saying it's, it's not, it's not just strictly about people that are in like any kind of sex work but what i'm saying is like it's okay if it should be also okay that if i i don't like it yeah that should be okay too but i'm saying as a person that is like looked down on it in the past i i'm now looking at it differently now i'm looking at it like oh okay yeah you're just monetizing your i monetize my personality on twitch monetize my personality as a stand-up comedian that's me monetizing my personality you know so if there's you know like we used to we used to call Instagram models. We used to joke about them. No, no, no. They're the only models now. Yeah, <laughs> and they're making bad. Yeah, yeah. They're the only model. They're models now. Yeah. Okay. Because so, if you're an Instagram model, then an agency will see you, and now they're in runway. Now they're in magazines. Uh-uh. No, no. They don't need these people. No, no. Runway people models don't make money. Yeah. The only runway models that make money are ones that already have a name. You know, like Kendall Jenner makes a lot of money on the runway because she's Kendall Jenner. Yeah. And it's, there's very few runway models. I, I know this for now because, you know, my girl, she, 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 if she was in the 80s, she, it would have been, she, she's a classic 80s type runway model look. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? But that, that's not where they make money. No, no. They, they don't need agents and managers and all this stuff. They got their, they're, they're getting money from bang, that bang and, drink. Oh my God. They're yeah. getting money from uh, influencer websites that are hooking them up with brands because mm-hmm. they have 300,000 followers. And, and, and it's like, they, this is a whole different type of thing about monetizing all this kind of stuff. So, what I'm saying is the world is changing. Like I say, like five years ago, we would we would make jokes about stand ups at the comedy store. We'd be making jokes about like you know oh inst- she oh she's an Instagram model. Now you cannot say that because those Instagram models are making more than most of the stand ups making fun of them. Yeah, you know. So I am just have a different. I all I'm saying is I just have a different feeling about it now. I'm just looking at this. You know, it's like you, like you well, to get back to what we were talking about. It's like OnlyFans. It's like I get it. We have to change the the stigma of it. Yeah, I still couldn't like do Lady it. Gaga, like, like Britney Spears changed the stigma on Vegas. As in terms of performing, being like a yeah, like like before Britney Spears, if you were in Vegas as an artist, if you saw an artist was in Vegas, you well, you think You're about like them. oh, they're at the oh, end of their old, career, they're at the end. This is the this is like their uh, last like this money is their grab. La- right, right. This is a money grab. This is their last hoorah. And then Britney did Britney it. went it, and now everybody Gaga. was like, everybody's like, oh wow. So wait. I can just be in one place and all the fans come to me and you're going to pay me a hundred million dollars. Now there's, there's no stigma on it anymore. Mm. Now Bruno Mars, Lady Gaga, Jennifer Lopez, all these people are going to Vegas. That's what Bella Thorne is is doing for what she did for uh, OnlyFans. Yep. Except that she, I don't think she did it right. You know, I think she was more making fun of it than anything else. Yeah. You know? I talked to a. I, I had a girl that was on OnlyFans come on my podcast, and she was furious with her. A lot of people were complaining because when Bella got on, she was like just teasing. It wasn't like yeah. actual OnlyFans content. I think. I think. I don't. I think it was just, and also how they changed the. Uh, now they changed it where 
Because people were asking for refunds, and that cost the company a lot of money. Yes. But either way, what I'm saying is, now if she makes it so all, because why not? You're some young, hot, you're 18 to 25, you are you know, you love showing off your body, you, you know, because people are different at different ages. Yeah. People are different at different, like, where I wonder pe- if there's, like, a cougar market on OnlyFans. Probably. Probably. You know, who knows? People are on there for all different types of reasons, but why not? I mean, it's like, it's, you know, it's like once we remove the stigma of that, how we feel about sex and sexuality, then it's just, you know, Cardi B could be on OnlyFans and she'd make more money than her rap career, you know, just because that's how people, (laughs) that's how we feel about sex and all this kind of stuff. And there's something, I guess there's something sort of like personal about it. Because to me, I don't get it because you just go. It's like to me, it's like buying hotel porn. Why? Yeah, when, why you, s- when you have a laptop, you know, I like- <laughs> I subscribed to this one dude's OnlyFans. It was him and his girlfriend, so I subscribed to it. And this is at the beginning of pandemic, so I'm like on my stimulus money, and I'm like, <laughs> let's give it a go. I'm horny at my mom's house. I got money in the bank. And after like a month or two, I'm like, I've seen all I need to see. Yeah. I, if you watch one, you know, come face shot, you've seen them all. <laughs> and and then it was like messed up because then I unsubscribe what I gave him ten dollars over two months or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then that's it. Like, I don't know how many long term. How do you keep someone long term on OnlyFans? You have to be super involved and like make people feel like, you know, you want them there. And you're well, that's excited the whole thing have- about it. Listen, there's a difference between looking on Pornhub and seeing, let's say you, let's say you were doing porn and there's a video of you on Pornhub, right? So Mm -hmm. there's people that are like, you know, purple hair, you know, they're like, oh, you you know, there's a difference between looking at that as opposed to knowing it's you. Because you have to be a personality and tits. But if it's you- That's exhausting. I can only be (laughs) one at a time. I'm either tits or I'm personality. I can't be both. No, but I think that there's something at, you're at home thinking that, Oh, I know this couple. Yeah. I'm connected to this couple. I'm one away from this couple. Yeah. And and you feel like, oh, I'm a part of their life. And you're paying to see what they're doing. It's like a voyeurism. Yeah. It's a weird. And that's what I think OnlyFans is all about. It's just knowing that Bella Thorne is sending me a nude personally. Yes. As opposed to just going to Bella Thorne Her nude. Instagram <laughs> yeah, or yeah, whatever. Yeah, right, whatever it is like that. So I think that people are paying for that personal touch. Some guy offered me on, he DM'd me on Instagram. He said, I'll give you $200 for a topless pick." Hell no. And why? Why? Because $200, first of all, will get me like, a week's worth of groceries. But also, once I send that topless photo, I don't know what you're going to do with it. You could potentially make more money off that photo in the long run. See, you would like to think that... I think there's some sort of, like, gentleman's agreement that everybody has. I don't think so. I know too many gentlemen. They don't... No, they no, don't no. I'm not, I, don't mean, I don't mean about... I mean for all of us. Like, whatever the, that, agree, that like agreement is. Like, you think is. that I would send him that photo and he would hold it precious to him? Like, No, wow. but I feel like... Like, that's what I feel about OnlyFans, though. I feel like, why can't I just go now to the internet and go, Bella Thorne naked? Yeah. Google that. And then whoever had her pictures, then what, are they just putting them on a site now? Like, why, why'd you pay? Shouldn't exactly. it just be like one person, like, it should be one person paying for all the OnlyFans and then putting those pictures that they get on the internet. <laughs> I know. That's why, that's why I'm like, I would never do it to, uh... So you, okay, so let me ask you this. Huh. So is, is it, is it, it's not about the amount of money. It's partially it's, about the amount. Okay, of so money. you don't think it's enough money. So you there's think, a, there's you think enough higher amount. of yourself than two hundred dollars yes. for one naked yes. pic. Okay. Yes, I do. Okay, because I'm picturing what he potentially does with that picture. Okay, that's a whole other issue. That's a whole other. That's I'd not be, the same thing. That's not mutually exclusive. You thinking that your topless picture is worth more than two hundred dollars is different from you worried about what he's going to do with said picture. I don't know if... And that's you looking down on, uh, by the way, that's you having a, a opinion about people that do this. What do you mean? So when you look at somebody that's doing it for 10... That somebody's but tra- more that's com- not enough? But it's because I'm not comfortable with my 
sexuality on display. That's me not being comfortable with people having photos of my But boobs. there is an amount that'll make you comfortable. But there would be an amount that would make me comfortable. <laughs> I'd be very comfortable with a certain amount. <laughs> at, w- at what point do you go, hmm? Is it like if he had said, okay, 500? No. It would ha- 500 maybe for each titty. <laughs> So a thousand, no, a th- I, I so think, 500 a titty. That's what you're saying right now. 500 a titty. I you're, think it you're, would be more than that. Would it? Yes. Okay. If someone off, yeah, I don't care. I'm holding these close to my chest, literally. All right. But I, 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 don't, I don't know. know. If I was, yeah, I, I don't know. I would want, I would want to be able to buy myself a lot of nice things for my boobs. Yeah, but so you're not thinking about the. This is just the one. So you'd say this is a one-off for you. Yes. You know, but what if he said, what if he said, hey, here's 200 and I got 500 friends who will do the same thing. Mm -hmm. Now we're talking about an MLM. (laughs) (laughs) This is like Mary Kay for titties. Yeah. This is like a, he's a venture capitalist. Yeah. He's saying like, hey, I got my friends and then they'll recruit people and then their friends will get them. Yeah. I mean, then we're talking. It's like Amway. Yeah. Um. Well, that's basically, isn't that what, I, I, you I, know what I didn't understand about OnlyFans is like, is it, are they the only site? Like, like, why can't someone, like, I don't understand why these girls that all hated on Bella Thorne, just start up an app. Like, why can't you just start your own app or, or be like, you know. Yeah, I mean. Are they the only ones? Uh, yeah. No pun know. intended. <laughs> <laughs> they got to be another site that just like, actually there is because, oh, there is because. Someone else. I just. I there was an earthquake the other day. Yesterday. Yeah, in the morning. Yeah, and I tweeted. Was, that was an it earthquake? small? Oh, it was I didn't a little small feel one. Anything. And I just tweeted. Was there an earthquake? The one of the persons that responded to me was some some girl who had like OnlyFans and and she had some other site too. So I clicked on the the link because I was like, what is this one? And it's some kind of thing. It's like I forgot the name of the site, but it's like a person can pay you, and they you make a video for them, and they get to direct it. Oh, it's like Cameo, but for sex. Yeah. So it's like... Uh, Sexio. And it's funny because I'm on Cameo, you know? Yeah. Do you like it? Yeah. What's, what I does know. it matter? I don't know. I always tell people, they used to they used to use me to recruit. Hey, and I, and these comics would call me. Hey, they said that you're on there. Can you tell me? And I hated that. Yeah. So I'd be like, yo, let me explain something to you. I'm Montez from Workaholics. People are obsessed. Okay. They're obsessed with that show. Yes. And it's like, so here's this weird character on this show that they loved. Getting that person to say happy birthday. You're such and such comic. Like, you may it may not be the same thing. You yeah. know? It's just it's not the same. So don't expect that it's gonna work. And let you know, you you'll have your fans. You might have some fans who maybe are gonna wanna do this. Yeah. But like it's different. You know, so I wish they hadn't, you know, but anyways. <laughs> it's I guess it's the same thing. Cause I got no problem with that. Yeah. Um, but but this was like you could go. Here's what you do in the video, and it's like it's like it was like ten dollars a minute, uh, you, you know, like you, you the girls set their price, so it'd be like so if you want so if you want uh, I want a ten minute video, it could be oh it's ten dollars a minute, and these are all the things I want you to do. Sure. And then you get that video, you know, so it's like they're all. I mean, what, all the point is, I was like, I thought what? <laughs> Again, why not just Google Pornhub and whatever you want this girl to do, you could just put that in the description, and a thousand videos will come up. So, but again, it's not the same because you're getting this personal, it's this personal thing. You feel like, oh, that chick's doing it for me. And they read the message from you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they're That's doing... what you're paying for. Yeah. That's the whole personal experience. I think that's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know I how don't we know. got into this, but I'm just. I have too many roommates to try and make, you know, personal videos, sexual oh. videos, you know. Well, you guys would have a. Could you imagine like an OnlyFans where the person like lives with three other people and they're like, hey, can I use the living room for 20 minutes? Well, as long as they knew, they would know. But then they would be telling their friends, yeah. oh, she's in there doing her OnlyFans. <laughs> then it will be like a thing. <laughs> yeah. But I guess if you're successful, then you don't need if roommates anymore. Bills, yeah. Right. But apparently I don't think it's really paying the bills the way people think it's paying exactly. the bills. Exactly. That's the thing is there's a lot of, because I'm on TikTok a lot. And I, I see a lot of people talking about OnlyFans and they're like, you know, now a lot of young girls are like, oh, this is how I can make money. But then they realize they get on and they're not really making that much money. 
And yeah. so now they're kind of like, did they actually want to do it or did they want money? And now they're kind of well. I mean, I think that I think they're disillusioned because every single chick in the world wants to be Kim Kardashian, right? They think, yeah, or or have that experience where my sex tape is going to turn into a billion dollar industry. And my pushback on that is like, got to get Ray J in that video. She's not regular fine. Mm, yeah. Okay. Kim Kardashian is fine, fine. Next right? level. This this like. You know, so like all of these people, in the, I think we, we had this misconception that just because you have a bikini on that, oh, this means everybody's going to want to see you. And it's like, or no, let's take it a step further. It's going to want to pay to see more. It's like, nah, like, look, that's, they're, they're, they're flooding the market. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder how much I would get if I started an only, I mean, I wouldn't do it. I'm just curious. Because one time I sold a t-shirt that I wore for like three weeks. I was doing my first thing of like merch t-shirts. And there, one of the shirts I kept and I wore it all the time. And then I was like, I put it on an eBay auction. You know, you could Did you auction. sell it? Yeah. Well. And that was just a shirt that I wore a bunch. Check this out. What this turns into is... <clears throat> It turns into your commitment and the amount of work you put into it. Like these people, it's like webcamming too. There's a lot of people that think if I just start webcamming, people are going to pay to watch me do whatever. No, it takes like. It'd be like engaging. Exactly. Yeah. You have to like put in the effort. Thank you. You think like so many people think that they're just, I'm beautiful. I'm handsome. So people are going to watch me. Uh -uh. No, you're, you're boring as fuck. You can't be a lazy (laughs) webcammer. The people don't realize how boring they are. You still need personality and charisma. And like, so those are the people that shine. Yeah. Is and they put work into it is what I'm saying. So if you wanted to be a, I'm selling my It's clothes. like any job. Right. You have to put the work into You'd it. have to be doing it on your podcast all the time. It's like grinding with Here's my shirt. Mics. Here's my shirt, guys. Yes. Here's my new shirt. And you'd have to be talking about it all the time. And it's work and ever. But people at home just think, all she's doing is wearing a shirt and selling it. No, you, they're not seeing all the time and effort and consistency that's what makes like the, yeah. the, the ones that make money on OnlyFans or any of these kind of sex sites. They're the ones that just like got a podcast. The people that work at it, they got to be engaged with their fans. They got to like, you know, it's hard work. Mm-hmm. I don't even, have, I don't got a big following on my podcast. It's work. It's hard. Yeah. And then, you know, it's the pe- and then maybe, maybe you go, oh, maybe I'm just not interesting enough. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Everybody thinks, oh, I could be Rogan. Like, no, he's been doing that shit for 10 years. Yeah. And he's he's something special about him, you know? Yeah. And that's and it's the same thing that goes trickles down to even on the level of selling sex. You're not as interesting you gotta as you think Joe you Rogan are. You got to be the Joe Rogan of selling sex. Yeah. And those people like that. Yeah. Lee San, you know. Who's that? This old, old school porn actor. Oh, okay. She's into sports now. Oh. Only know because I've been on her sports show a few times. Oh, I was okay. in a fantasy football league with her. She transitioned. <laughs> yeah. I want to get into Twitch streaming because oh, you yeah. stream on Twitch. Yeah. Do you feel like that is hard to game, stream, and then be engaging while gaming and streaming? Or do you think the it's The thing easier? we're talking about right now applies to all types of se- yeah. monetizing your personality. It's the same thing. Yeah. So for me, getting into Twitch streaming was like, oh... It's the novelty is, hey, that's the dude from Workaholics. So that's yeah. the dude from what you call it. He's the old, 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 old man is trying to play games, you know? So I was, I'm able to build off of that, you know? And it's now I'm trying to see, can I get even bigger? And so it is, it is, it's, it's work. I stream for hours. Do you? Yeah. It's a lot. You stream for hours. I I have six, seven hour streams. Wow. But I'm just on there and then like I'm engaging with the, the my to things the up chat. and the chat say talking to me i gotta give the trolls a time out i have to like you know you know it's like so it's it's so you're the one who's like time outing the trolls no i have mods too okay. but i also do it yeah i also do it i'll be like can you get a time out you being stupid do you have a discord yes okay i think i'm gonna make a discord yeah, but that's it's just like having an Instagram or whatever. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't know why. It's just like it's like one of those things where they go, "Oh, you have to have this." You don't have to, but you know, it's just one of those things that goes hand in hand with it. But I don't get it. Yeah, you know what I mean? I don't understand. So again, it's like it's you just have to put. It's about consistency and, and work and like, what is your appeal? To you have to know that because you look at some of these big game streamers. You know, they it, it, a lot of it is they're really great at the game. And they have a great, their personality is engaging, you know? I'm not great at the game. Mm. So I know that it's just the novelty of like, here's the comedian gamer. 
you know, so I'm talking shit to the chat and I'm like doing that kind of stuff. When you auditioned for Workaholics, did you audition for Workaholics? Yeah, yeah. When yeah. you auditioned for it, did you realize that it was going to no, be? No, I thought it was, I was like, this is dumb. Yeah. I, I was like, this is never going to, first of all, this is never going to get on TV. I can't believe they're saying these words. And I was like, even if this gets on, what this will last? You know, this will get canceled quick. Yeah. That's, that's exactly what I thought. But when you want to work, you work. Yeah, so then you get it, and then when did you realize that it was a lot bigger um, than you thought it would be? Watching the popularity of the three boys grow, mm. you know, and people just, people were like, but it became like pop culture, you know, like they used to have, they, they, they used to have this thing, tight butthole. Yes. When everybody was doing tight butthole, I was like, oh, this is, this is something, there's something here, you yeah. know, there's something, there's something here. And then, because, because did you notice that it affected your stand-up when you would go on the road and stuff? No, it didn't affect my stand-up at really? all. Really? No, 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 no. Because I think stand-ups so again, always... Again, have... that's another misconception about, like, people think, if you're on TV, that yes. means people are going to come watch you. No, it doesn't work like that. Wow. Because <laughs> I always say in my head, I'm like, oh, it would be so cool to be on, like, a show or something, no, and it then... Did, it, did, it literally be able did nothing to... for me. Wow. Because you know, if it... it could, no, because it, 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 it has nothing to do with that, like, you know... It was like for a long time, people didn't even know I was a stand-up. Yeah. Even though I started as a stand-up, but was to be a stand-up for years. Do you think that that was frustrating? It's still frustrating. Yeah. It's very frustrating. So, I don't, I don't know. You know, it's like I, I'm the kind of person, you know, people come to my show, then they say afterwards, oh, man, I didn't know you were this funny or blah, blah. So, that, so I, I always look back on myself being like, damn, I'm, I'm not marketing by myself properly. I'm not, I'm not putting myself out there enough or I'm not, you know, it's like, what am I not doing that's not connecting with my mm -hmm. audience? But it's not because of that. For some people, it might be. Like, for some people, but like, for me, it was like, so, you know, the, who's the workaholics crowd? Is you know, college eighteen to they don't go to comedy clubs. Yeah, you know they didn't go to comedy. They don't have disposable income to go to a comedy show. That shit is expensive. You know, you're talking twenty dollars a ticket. Uh, you know, sometimes more plus so you, the two plus drinks the two minimum. drinks and the food. Like what? What twenty year old living in some little town got a hundred dollars to spend just on a Friday night to go see? You know what I mean? When they can go to like the local bar and get blacked out for ten dollars. Whatever it is, so it's like that's that was part of it. And um, I don't know. It just was it was it was strange, you know, because, you know, we, it came out of nowhere. So it's not like the people that were watching Workaholics, you know, I'm older. They're not looking at like, oh, I'm a fan of that guy. You know, they they, they want to see the boys. You know what I mean? Yeah. When you think of Workaholics, you think of like Adam Blake and Anders and and Adam was the only stand up. So he went out on the road doing He's colleges so nice. and stuff and stuff like that. Yeah. So they were doing it like that. So for me, it wasn't like, oh, you're on TV and now you're going to be, you know. Did you know Adam before? Yeah. That's cool. Just doing stand-up. Yeah. But I didn't know that. <laughs> A week before I auditioned for Workaholics, I saw Adam at the Brea Improv, you know. Yeah. And I hadn't seen him in a while. And he went up and did some stand up and i said and i was giving him a talk afterwards like you're doing good kid you yeah know what I mean? that's some big brother <laughs> comic you know yeah. what i mean like you know keep doing what you're doing man yeah i go to this audition i see him in the room and my first thought is like oh he must be interning for that was my <laughs> like first checking thought. the names off yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Casting, see, I look like, at him okay. trying to get into hollywood good for him yeah after that audition i remember one of my ma the managers say to me how did that how did that divine project go you know and i said what are you talking about he was like, yeah, the Adam Devine project. And I said, that's the moment it hit me. That was the moment it hit me. But now that I look back on it, I'm glad I didn't know all that. Oh, I, yeah. I'm actually glad I thought about it the way I did because I had no, I just had, I was just free like to just be myself in this audition. Were you not trying to be like, hey, remember last week at yeah, Brian? Yeah, 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 that was yeah, so much yeah. fun. You did great. Yeah, yeah. No, no. I just, it just was kind of like, I don't give a fuck about you or yeah. anybody in this room. I'm yeah. just going to do what I do. You know, and that's just the best way to be have you done in the audition process. Have you done any Zoom auditions? Yeah, I've done some commercial Zoom auditions. Yeah. They're okay. They're fine. I like going in better. Yeah, I like going into. I hate doing... Uh, self-tapes? I, I used to like self-tapes. Now I hate them. I hate them. And I hate them because I don't have anybody to self-tape with except for my girlfriend. And she's terrible. My friend, my friend Greg is great. <laughs> oh, Rachel, like she thinks she's auditioning. Yes. You know what I mean? So I, I like I like one time like I'm, I had to do this audition and she's getting ready. I'm like, bitch, what are You're you doing? You're off camera. <laughs> <laughs> she what what you getting ready for? On. What are you doing? She's like, well, I just want to be. I was like, you, you, 
I need you to sit here and read. And then she's like trying to act and stuff. And I'm like, oh my God. Now she gets it. She's actually way better at it now. Yeah. It's actually really like really now she's cool. She has her coffee in her hand and she's like, blah, 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 blah you know. Yeah. And she's actually good at memorizing. Like, you know, she, I, I it's see her. It's so frustrating <laughs> when the person you're reading with picks up on the lines faster than you. Oh. Like when you're struggling with the lines and they don't look at the script, they go, your line is this. And you're like, <laughs> you know what? You audition for me. You sit, sit over but here. But that's the hardest part about it is finding somebody to audition with you that you're comfortable with or whatever or getting it right and it's just like i go i, I don't know i get kind of bitter about it sometimes too because sometimes you get these dumb auditions for the position i'm in i go what if these lines are going to show you that you can't look at a lot of the things that i've already done and be like hey i think this guy's good for the part yeah that's the hard struggle i have well i'm trying not to have an attitude about it you know so you go, why don't you just look at I'm dying up here and seven seasons of workaholics and this, you know, you, you have that kind of that vibe you have in your head about it. And then you go, so I have to go do these like this like one scene and you're going to look at this. At, I'm at home and then you're going to decide, oh, I think this guy's a good actor. What are you talking about? It's yeah. going to be different on a set. It's going to be different after we rehearse and after we like, you know, it's like, what are you what what are you seeing on this that you can't just look at work I've already done and be like, I think I want this guy. Yeah. I hate that it's hard for me to get that out of my head sometimes. I bet cuz yeah, there is proof of you acting and <laughs> things with me there's, you know, nothing. I get that. Yeah. Well, what's going on here? Nothing. Oh. I just want to fix that. Your pillow. <laughs> um yeah it's so frustrating i had an audition the other day a self-tape and it was like two lines two oh. lines so i'm like okay okay two lines and then also the character's name was not a white person's I, from what i imagine not a white character's name so i'm like oh this isn't for me oh welcome to welcome to my world yeah do you think they ever write roles for someone that looks like me ever how I'm would always, you describe I'm yourself? Always, I'm always going in and it, and it says like, you know, 30s to 40s, <laughs> um, you know, now it, it'll be like, it'll be like all ethnicities, uh, okay. Or it'll say, or you know, this is what, this is how it goes. They wrote a sitcom. They made it all white and they didn't notice it until they're sitting around trying to cast. And they so go, they're trying to recast yeah, the white yeah, characters? Yeah, yeah, they, they go, oh, we made another all white sitcom. You know, and then then the 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 dumbass progressive liberal Hollywood, uh, it, you know, they think at that point is when they need to make changes. So they 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 don't think that in the in the creative process, in the writing process, in the producer cat in that process, they think that we should have ethnicity there. No, they go after all these white people have gotten together and made a white project. That's when they go. We probably should put somebody of color in it. Mm -hmm. That's when I come in, mm -hmm. and I read the part of Jacob. Jacob. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then, then they'll, they'll they'll change the name later, but they you know, and you're just in there. So many times I I, I, I went on a sitcom audition. I got test. I was even I even tested for it, uh, and it was you know the the, the creator of him said it to me himself that he was just because I knew him. He was a comic. I won't say who, but he was just like he was just like, I mean. This character is supposed to be white. And I'm reading it and I'm like, yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> yeah. This is your white best friend that you know, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, so what? You know, who cares that this is a white, you know, a white guy, you know? But then the network is like, no, I think we should make this person black or Mexican or whatever. And then you just go, all right. <laughs> yeah, at this point I just try and, and have fun. Because yeah, I'm like, there's no it's clear that this isn't a role that's meant for me. So I might as well just have fun because if they're going to watch the tape regardless of if it's meant for me or not, I might as well just... Listen, my, my real advice to you about this kind of stuff is just to say, change their mind. That's mm. that's always been my mindset about it. You know, and I, and, and I learned a lot from the Workaholics audition, by the way. The, the Workaholics audition process Wait, had you, changed my life. Had you acted no, and no. stuff before that? Was that? My first, uh, that was my first break. And you were, I mean, that show lasted a long time. You were in it for a while. Yeah. So did you feel like you got to learn a lot about acting and like... Um, Yes and no. Because it was like when you're being like some outlandish, crazy character, there's no range to that. Mm. You know what I mean? So it doesn't matter. But it's, And comedic acting is way harder than dramatic acting. It's a lot harder. Yes. It's different. You the know? timing is crazy yeah time it just, it's a lot of things that go into it but what i learned from that process is never think you're not good enough for the part mm. never think that you're not 
right for a part is mm. really the thing I got from that. Because I remember coming into the, uh, the, the callback. First of all, I remember the first audition. I did it. And I really worked at it, too. I was like, oh, I think I want to get this. Because I couldn't believe the nonsense that they were making this person say. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, I want to say that on TV. Do you remember TV. the lines for the yeah, first yeah. audition? The, the first audition was the, was the like, ha talk, me talking about having sex with my wife in the morning. That was the audition. And it was yeah. way longer for the audition than they actually sh we actually shot in the show. And it was this long soliloquy of talking about me having sex with my wife. You know, I remember like I woke up 5 a.m. in the morning. I got him, you know, all this stuff. And I was like, this is crazy. You know, I, I, I loved it so much. So I really worked at it. Anyway, after the first audition, I, I did it. And then I saw, first of all, they didn't know what ethnicity they wanted. So they had black guys. They had Latino guys. All right. All right. Um, I did the audition and I saw the casting director look at the other casting director. And she went like this. You know? Yeah. I remember that look she gave. And it was a look of like, okay, we can, that, let's maybe go with that. That probably feels so good. Yeah, it did. It did. It's a little moment. I, I always, I, I, you know, you got to watch what they're, what they're feeling. So then I go to the callback. At the callback, here's the guy from a TV show. Here's another guy from the TV show. Oof. It was like, there's another guy from a TV show. Here's, and it was like people I know, like Jay Phillips. It was like, uh, you know, it was all these people from these things. And I thought. At the time, I thought, I'm never going to get this. You know? Like, look at these people. It's so intimidating. And it was very, and I was like, I'm never going to get this. But turns out, they didn't want someone famous. Because they didn't want somebody, because they weren't famous. The boys mm -hmm. weren't famous. So they kind of wanted somebody who could do the part, and it's not going to outshine them in terms of, uh, you know, fame and that kind of stuff, where it becomes about that person. Yeah. They didn't want me to Urkel the show. You know what sure. I mean? So, when I got the part, I, I thought to myself, oh, I'm never going to think that way again. I'm always just going to be like... And it doesn't matter who they wrote it for. I'm going to change their mind that that I'm right for this. And that's just how you have to go into wow, it. Wow, I like that. That's how you have to do it. You, you, like I saw, I just tell you right now, don't ever look at it and be like, oh, this, oh they, want a, they want a tall girl with, you know, with, no, you just go, no, 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 they don't. They want you. Me, Allie Mack. Yes. Change their mind. And then was it... Weird going from workaholics to then I'm dying up here, which it's, is much more. Yeah, yeah, super weird. You know, it was super intimidating. Were you nervous? Oh, super nervous. I was super nervous. You know, I got that part just because <clears throat> two things happened. I'm at the comedy store. It's a regular Tuesday night. And Adam walks up to me and he says, hey, Jim Carrey is here. You know, my I would have pooped my pants. You would have pooped your pants? Yeah. My first thought was, is he bumping me? Do I have to bring him on stage? I was so mad. Yeah. I was like, what the fuck is Jim Carrey doing here? He got $300 million in the bank and he's bumping people at the comedy store at this stage in he his career? He needs to get 15 minutes. Yeah, really I was quick. so, I was furious. Okay. I was so mad about it. It was so dumb of me, but I took that energy on stage and I fucking killed. Oh, don't you feel like you do better when you're like angry? Yeah, 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 yeah. But, but which I don't like about yeah. myself though. I don't yeah. like that. Because it's bad. It's a bad, it's a bad, I had to find a different way to tap into it. But anyway. I get a call the next day. I got an audition for the show. Turns out, it turns out Jim Carrey and all the producers were there. And they were just scouting people for the thing. So I got bent out of shape for no reason. So it was stupid. So I, anyway, I got an audition the next day. I had a follow-up audition and I got the part three weeks later. But the first audition was, the note after the first audition was, hey, we know he could be funny, but we need him to be real in these things. So I got that note and I was like, oh, okay, this is a serious show, right? So I did that audition. I got the part, you know? I even remember getting tested for... At Showtime, you know, I walk into the room, and it's the head of Showtime. Okay, he's sitting there. I look over at the the casting, and they have this headshot of me, and it's a headshot that they got off Google. Oh no! This is the first thing I said. Why are you using that headshot? <laughs> it's like you holding a mic. It, I was so mad. I said, "What? Why is that headshot on the table?" You know, I, this is this is what I said in my. The head of the Showtime says. He goes, what's wrong, with, what's wrong with this headshot? I go, man, this, I have headshots on my website. I don't know why. You know, I'm going into this whole thing about it. And we're having this conversation about my headshot. And then after a while, I think to myself, what am I doing? Yeah. Like, just like, what am I doing? You know? So then I do the thing. But I realize later now, I go, oh, that whole energy was part of this. You know, it's part of the thing. I owned my, you know, I wasn't scared of the moment or anything like that because I'm worried about other shit. You know yeah. what I mean? And so anyways. I got the, but it turns out they wanted me anyway, you know? So 
they just needed to like this was like a button on the thing so anyways getting apart and then like seeing the the work it was like oh this is serious and then it's like melissa leo she's an academy award-winning actress you know and we're like you know on this really serious dr- dramatic set even though i'm with my funny buddies do you think that that makes it easier having your friends or more nerve-wracking because now your friends are watching you no because we do that anyway when we're watching each other do stand-up there's already a sort of competitive you know sort of like i gotta make sure i'm on point because yeah. they're gonna be the first ones to be like Ugh, that you weren't funny last night or yeah or you know you know what i mean so we already have this sort of like thing and i think that i'm at you know guys at our age al and santino and myself we already know all that it took to get to this point so it's like what what are you gonna you know you're gonna fold now it makes yeah. no sense so but it was intimidating especially some of the role some of the scenes and stuff like that but i found that I found that it came easier to me than doing comedic acting. I found that it, because I'm always going to be funny. I just have a natural funniness about me. So toning that down and just being real in a scene is easier than understanding why or when you're supposed to be funny or why something is funny. You know, a lot of times people, I remember I was helping my buddy do an audition. And and so, you know, he's reading the thing and he's like being a little wacky. And I said to him, yo, man. You're not the reason this scene is funny. This funny is how this main character is reacting to you. Yeah. That's the comedy. Not you being funny. I have to be funny right now. Like, no, nah, dude. Sometimes just being like this. See? <laughs> you cracked Anthony. <laughs> Sometimes just being while the other person is doing something stupid. Like, that's what you react to. Yeah. I have my friend, my friend Greg helps me with auditions. Greg Santos. He's a really funny comedian. Do you know him? I don't Greg? know. Maybe by face. Yeah. I'm terrible with names. He's great, but he'll, he'll give such good feedback because sometimes I'm like reading a script and he'll say the same thing. He's like, you're not the, you're not the person in this scene. Yeah. They just want to see you. But, the other. N- but knowing that is so, I learned it in a class. I took this comedic acting class one time and, you know it was an exercise he said he had somebody go on stage he said now do something funny you know so the person was you know trying to do something you know and everybody was just kind of like whatever yeah then the guy said to me he picked me he said now eric i just want you to go stand next to that person and just react to what they're doing and that was the comedy Mm. and this is why we like watching people fall and stuff like on the internet like it's not necessarily like that that's funny it's like when you it's like it, it's like when you watch somebody watching something funny there's something about that ex- shared experience where you like you see somebody fall and you start laughing and i go ha what are you yeah, what, 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 what are we looking at so it's the reaction that makes the kind but anyways that's what makes it hard it makes it a little harder to understand what or or what makes you funny just, just another quick example is like I, I was doing this audition and I was supposed to be a TSA agent. It was for a commercial. So I'm TSA at the airport, you know? And then I do the thing and the guy says to me, hey, in this scene, I don't want you to be funny mad. I need you to be mad for this scene. And I knew exactly what he meant, you know? And there is a, such a difference between being someone that's like, you know, not really mad, you know? Yeah. But saying mad things and people are like, ah, that guy's not, you know, as opposed to somebody being like, you know, hey, you know, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. You know what I mean? And then it's like, it, it, and it was like, and that's the, that's the subtle differences in comedy. And if you know yourself like that, you'll know how it's going to come across. Robert De Niro's great at that. That's why he was able to transition into like doing comedies. You know, because he's, because you take him being Robert De Niro and you put him around, what's his face? Um, Zoolander. uh, Oh, Ben Stiller. Ben Stiller. So you take Robert De Niro being Robert De Niro, never not changing who Robert De Niro is, and you add Ben Stiller. That's magic. Yeah. Without Robert De Niro having to like pretend like he's, you know, he's not doing anything more. He's just being Robert De Niro. Yeah. Like knowing how to do that in a comedy scene, that's the tough part. 
Did you uh, like acting? Was it like, uh, did you feel like acting was taken away from stand up or were you able to like fuel it into stand up? Well, it was supposed to be hand in hand. You know, yeah. I come from an era where, you know, you're supposed to get, you're supposed to like, the clubs are supposed to introduce you to TV and then that, you know, no, but it changed. You have to be on TV to do clubs. Yeah. You know? So, so the whole world was flipped upside down through my, my, my generation. Like I went from, dial up rotary phones to like you know now we're on the internet i i saw it all so i i'm seeing the things change but i never i don't necessarily get to take advantage of it mm. you know so but anyways it, it just goes hand in hand I, I i love both you know i love doing stand-up i'm addicted to doing stand-up but i love being on a set i love taking people's words and bringing them to life yeah in a situation so what do you think about everyone moving um I get it. Would you move? No, I'm from yeah. LA. My family's uh, here. Wait, where? I'm from. I'm from the. I'm from just from LA. I'm from okay. an LA area. So my family's here. My girls' family's here. They, you know, they're from Valencia. So it's like I don't have any feeling like I get to move. But I get why people are moving because they came here because they thought they were going to make it, or they came here because Hollywood was here and agents and all this kind of stuff. But now it's like everything's remote. Everything's gone. Like, what's the point of paying? you know, 16% tax rate and uh, you can't even go in, you know, wh why don't you go live like a king in someplace else, you know, where it's like easier, you know, so I get why people are leaving. I know. You know? I think if my family wasn't from LA, I would have considered it more, but everyone's here. I like being near my family. Yeah, me too. That's, that's what I'm saying. I'm from, yeah. I'm an LA person. So that's why I don't think like I, I didn't, I didn't migrate here to, for what some particular reason, said yeah. reason. So that reason is now gone for those people. So, like, why be here? It makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So, I don't care. I just don't like when people say they're, I'm, I'm leaving because of the homeless problem. As if there's no homeless in Texas. Yeah. You know, there's that's... homeless everywhere. There's homeless everywhere, but we have, like, a hear no evil, see no evil, say no evil about it. So, right, right now, the homeless problem in L.A. is getting so bad that it's now spilling over into your neighborhoods. And people are kind of like, ooh, they're uncomfortable by it because it makes you uncomfortable to yeah. see people... There's fools on, on little... <laughs> Uh, the beds that, you know, when people throw out their mattresses, yeah. they just set up shop in front of my house. They're my new neighbors. Yeah. That's, that's, They're comfy. That's what I'm saying. So it's like, it's tough for people because they don't want to deal with it. Because then when you see people like that, you know, you're not doing enough. Yeah. So, so, so a lot of people, they just. It makes them like realize their own. Yeah. 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 When you see a homeless person, you look at that and realize what a piece of shit you have been at a certain point in your mm. life, you know? Well, that's at least I think about that. I've, uh, but that's just my bleeding heart in me. It's like I go, like it's like, what do we do? It's like it's such a daunting task. Like you think, like even if you go, like, well, I gave a homeless person soup. Okay, so they ate one meal. Yeah. Oh, good for you. Yeah. So, so when you're going into heaven, you're gonna be like, remember that time I gave that homeless dude some soup? Remember the clam chowder? Remember that clam chowder I gave? You know the the bag yeah, lady. Yeah. So can we? Uh, you know, it's like no, it's not like that's not enough. Yeah. You know, we we find ourselves going. Well, you know, I like I have money in my car. If I pull up on a thing, I go, oh, here you go, man. Like that's that's my toll for my soul to be like, whoo. I'm a good person. I'm a good person. I did it. I gave that fifty cents to that dude sitting on the side of the road. Yeah. You know. And then there's people who are like, well, you don't know what they're doing with that money. Maybe they're buying drugs. Who cares? So, None of my business. Of, right. So you have all these different things. So I just go leaving L.A. because of. I just, I just don't like that. I have a problem yeah. with it. We got to wrap it up. Oh. I know. It went by quick. You, we never even officially I know. started. I so. know. <laughs> it, it hasn't started. This was just for me. We're not putting this episode out. We just started talking and I was just like, oh, okay. I guess we're doing the podcast. I want to have you back on though. I want to have you back on though. I want to talk more about comedy. I want to talk more about your podcast. I want to talk more about streaming. Listen, I'm literally doing nothing. I know. I've, I, I really, I like my girl gets mad at me because she's like, you never leave the house. Even though I know she loves it. She wants to act like she, you know, I haven't traveled. I haven't, this is now a year now since it's, I've been on a yeah. plane. You know, and I'm just like, I'm just home. And I find myself just like not wanting to go out because I hate wearing a mask. I go to the park. I hate being around people and dealing with their not. Like I have this mask, right? Yeah. I, I just got this mask, right? So I'm wearing this mask. once. So, you know, it's like one of these, you know? So I'm, I'm out. I'm picking up some food. I have this mask on. Some guy walks up to me. Some guy kind of casually, hey, would you like a mask? You know? Yeah. And then, then he took it. Then he did a double take. because he And I was like. I want I want to be like yeah. Can you speak up because I can't hear you through my mask. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. 
So it's like some people like the way people are. I don't like being around people. Mm. I don't like I don't like these like you know mask police people. They can go fuck themselves. Oh okay? yeah, mask police people. Fuck you. All right. I go especially in L.A. Everyone's all a cab. All all cops are you know bastards or whatever. I'm like, when did you become the COVID police? Yeah 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 yeah. Those, those people, I I get out of my fucking face. And yeah. also people that are like, I don't need a mask. Fuck you too. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, is it does it hurt? I don't like wearing seatbelts either. You know what I mean? I'm a, I'm a big guy. I don't want to wear a seatbelt. It's just sometimes it's, it's you know, I do it because it, it keeps you safe. They say. <laughs> and then if you wear, people won't say annoying shit to you. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. I, I stay home. I just, I just, I can't stand it. I can't well, stand I'll it. have you back on. You can stay at Anthony's home. We'll record another <laughs> podcast. Thanks for being here. Do you want to plug anything? Plug um, all your stuff. Oh, yeah, Air Griffin Gaming. I Twitch, I'm on Twitch every single day. And then I have my podcast, Riffin' with Griffin, every Monday. So, yeah. Thank and, you. And at Air Griffin on everything. I'm glad you came. It was nice to see you. You too. <laughs>